Hey nerds, what's up? Today's video is the last Valentine's video challenge that I want to participate in and I will link the host's video and everything down in the description box as well as in the cards and in order to enter to win the giveaway that they have you need to make this same video and then go and post it in their comments on the host video. So that's how you can enter to win. I have my own as well. I'll link it up in the cards too. Um, and you have until like, you have more until the, like a couple weeks. We didn't have like a set date, but like about a couple weeks to turn in the videos. So today we're talking about some books that have stood the test of time, in your opinion, on how amazing they are. I'm excited. These five books are kind of in an order, but not really. They all are really amazing books. So, starting off, I have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This book I had to read a long time ago when I was in community college. I was taking an English class um, with actually with my friend Kelsey that I'm still friends with today and then our instructor I am like acquaintances with her on Facebook and stuff now um, and this is one of the books that we had to read that time and so this book is about a set of people and you kind of grow up with them um, so I'm just gonna read the back to you because I I don't know how to explain this book without telling you like all of the secrets <laughs> spoilers but this is a sci-fi book um so as children kathy ruth and tommy were students at hailsham an exclusive boarding school secluded in the english countryside it was a place of mercurial cliques and mysterious rules and teachers were constantly reminding their charges of how special they were now years later kathy is a young woman ruth and tommy have re-entered her life and for the first time she's beginning to look back at their shared past and understand what it is that makes them so special and how that gift will shape the rest of their time together suspenseful moving beautifully atmospheric yes so this book is really good i feel like it questions not only like what it means to be human but also like how even if science can go so far does it mean that it should i think that that's like the overarching question of this book and i just it's really well done i recently re-listened to it on audiobook um last year i think and yeah just as good i definitely wouldn't reread this book like frequently but having had like five years in between the two rereads i felt like it was a really good read to go through again and like have another perspective on it as I age and so I think I would revisit this like in the future yet again especially like obviously in real life science does continue to enhance and advantage and you know keep going and there's like questions of class and like how do you determine who deserves treat certain treatment um and like yeah it's it's really good next book that i have here i don't actually have with me but that is seas of snow by karenza jennings this book i was offered it by the author for a review like many years ago now when it came out and so i took it so this is a um self-published book and it's amazing it is so phenomenal every time i think about like a dark fucked up story like contemporary I think actually it's not a contemporary it's set in the 50s I think or 60s but this is a book that I always refer back to when I'm talking about like this is this is a level like this is five stars so this book has two timelines and in one timeline you're following our main character who I forget her name off the top of my head because I'm really bad with names in books but we follow our young main character at like 14 she's um, living next to her best friend who is a boy of the same age and her mom her mom's brother so her uncle comes back into town and that like basically ruins their life there's a lot of trigger warnings for physical abuse sexual assault things like that in this novel and so we follow this like really just terrifying experience of this 14 year old girl and then in 
the other timeline we're following a character that is struggling with her memory and she is being visited by the same boy from 14 so we know that it's time has passed but we don't know who the main character is that we're following we don't know like because she doesn't really remember a lot so her her she kind of like maybe has dementia or something we don't really know what's going on but we're following her see bobby i remember his name we follow her getting visited by robbie whenever he comes to visit her and the memories that that stirs up even though she doesn't really necessarily make all of the connections <sighs> it is so so superb it is so good and I definitely would read it again especially now knowing the things that you do know once you finish the book I would love to go back and read it to like see if I can pick up on more things that got me to the realization that happens. Another book is a book series, honestly, and it is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Um, I feel like Lainey Taylor is kind of just an author of that fits into this category because I could say the same thing about um, Strange the Dreamer as well, but I've now read this book twice. I've only read Strange the Dreamer once, and this series is just so beautifully written. Lainey Taylor's writing style is so gorgeous in my opinion. It's definitely very flowerly, flowerly so it's not like everyone's cup of tea but it's my cup of tea and yes so this book is also <clears throat> one of those ones that like people really either don't like this series or really like it because it does have this like thing that happens in it where it suddenly shifts from being an urban fantasy to a full-blown fantasy and so like it's hard to explain if you haven't read it yet but you have chimera in this story and you have fallen angels you have a huge um like class war essentially and like species interspecies war um and you have a main character named karu who grew up with a chimera raising her but she's a human, but she has um, access to the way that the magic works here because of her chimera, like, guardian. And she doesn't really understand why, how she came into the situation that she's in. She doesn't know why she's working with a chimera and also, like, is his charge, basically. Um, and so, like, what she does for this main character named Brimstone is she goes and like meets a bunch of random like creepy people who sell her teeth for brimstone and she doesn't know why and it's very weird she also has a main best friend her best friend is like super fun and such a like good nice relief from the very seriousness of the main plot of the story and sh they also have a uh, short story that goes along with it about her um convincing her like boyfriend to fall in love with her so cute i love it i love i love the whole thing but a lot of people who don't like the main story will love that short story more but i just like all of it and i will definitely reread this again i'm obsessed i this is like one of the first series that i ever went and looked up fan art for because the way that all of these characters are described being chimera because they're like multiple animals in one and stuff like I just wanted to see it and so this is the first book that I ever looked up fan art for which is funny because I was like a grown-ass adult when I looked at this stuff but like I didn't I didn't understand how great fan art could be and this book brought me into that world so thank you to Daughter of Smoke and Bone for that. Next two books are both favorites of all time. I can't pick between them, but I'm going to go in the order of like number one being the one I've loved for the longest since this s series is a books that have stood the test of time for me. So I have Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. <sighs> I love this book so much. I really want to do a reread of it. I think I might coming up here soon, but so this book is a book about sexual assault and basically the main character is raped by the popular like captain of the hockey team in this small town and the whole town is obsessed with hockey and 
it, this entire book is about how various people in the town react to the allegations of this rape that occurs. Um, and it's, it's about, yeah, different reactions. And it just feels really real. Like, the, the I couldn't believe it versus the, like, I'm going to support you no matter what. You have all, every way that somebody could respond to this type of accusation is in this book. It's so good. It's really rough to read, but if you can handle the content, I highly recommend it. And now I just want to read it again. I, this book created Frederick Bachman into an autobiography author for me. So like I already own Us Against You by him, which is over here. Um, I haven't read it, but I saw it at my used bookstore back when I could sell books back still and bought it at that time. Last book here on this list that are books that stood the test of time for me is Perks of Being a Wallflower. I come back to this book a lot. Um, this is another one where I just, I think this book, it was really formative for me, I think, in my like high school time. And then as I like have read it now, plus the movie is so well done, like just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. The one thing I will say about this book is that like if I had to give it one critique now, the older I get, the more I've read it. I do feel like some of the mental health aspects of the book is like not clear enough on the page. Like I remember reading this book and there is sexual assault in this story as well, but I remember reading it and being confused at the first time that I read it, being confused about what was what happened, like what what is the reaction to cuz it's it didn't it didn't seem clear enough to me and it wasn't until watching the movie that I realized what the on the page was saying and then it was clear and I don't know if that's just like I wasn't paying attention it's possible I'm me I know myself um so that is like one thing I would say is that maybe it wasn't like quite distinct enough not that I necessarily needed to be like on the page explaining word for word everything that happened but just like more clarity on the umbrella at least of what happened I guess I don't know but I've read this book many times now I also do think it's a very simple book which as I reread it more and more obviously I know the story very well and so it does get not repetitive but just like the formatting isn't necessarily what I like anymore because it's written in letter format and as we were talking about earlier I really like flowerly why do I keep saying flowerly? Flowery writing, and this is definitely not that. So <clears throat> even though it has stood the test of time, it definitely, and I would consider this one of my favorite books of all time, it's also not where my reading taste has, like, continued on that path, I guess. So it's, it's really interesting to, like, look back and, like, talk about that. But I love this book, and I love the movie. The movie is amazing. They all, the actors that are in it are great. I feel like it's a very good representation of the feelings that these characters give you in the book. The characters on the screen are also the same. Like, there was not a lot of changes made, and I just really appreciate that. So, yeah. Those are five books that are, have stood the test of time for me. I really love them. I would love to hear some books that you love, that you have loved for a longer period of time. All of these books I've read at least at least five years ago ish for the first time. Um, maybe Frederick Bachman is a little bit more recent than that, like maybe three years, but still it's none of these are like new favorites. They're all favorites that I still continue to like look back on. Like I just love seeing them on my shelves and being like that book. Another one just off the off the cuff is lovely bones and we were liars those two books are also amazing but i haven't reread either of those ones at all 
And all of these books, except for Seas of Snow, I have reread. Yeah. Okay. So that's everything for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I make videos every Saturday and Monday, so I'll see you guys very soon with another one. And of course, you can always find all of the links to my social media down in the description box. All of the posts and everything for Valentine's are also linked down below. And I hope you guys had an amazing reading month. I will be posting my wrap up soon. As of right now, I'm filming on Sunday the 21st. And I have a lot more reading to do, so I have a week to get some reading done. I need to I need to do some things. So hopefully, wish me luck. <laughs> Although by the time this goes up, it's too late. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. With that, see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.